G'day folks. This is the healing television I had in an earlier video. Just taking the back off it to see what it's like inside and it's pretty dirty. But everything's there. It's all tubes. There's no printed circuit or anything in it either. It's all just hardwired. Tripler or doubler. Cat flyback transformers in there. Comes out to there. I've got this thing hanging off it. This is a Thomas brand cathode ray tube. A tuner up there with two tubes on it. Poor little capacitor looks like it's leaking. No, actually it's had mice chewing on it. That's what that is. We've had a rodent problem. I've chewed the plastic casing. Hopefully they haven't chewed too much because I just want to plug this thing in and see if it works. Oh, they've gnawed on those little resistors too. Capacitors or whatever they are. Oh well, I'm going to plug it in and see what it does. The good thing about this one is it came with the circuit diagram still inside. It's got everything, even what to look for on the scope. 110 volt, 45 volt. adjustment diagram there too, which is good. Let's see if this thing's going to live, or just release the magic grey smoke, which I hope it doesn't. Near high tension. No brightness. No, nothing. No, no. Heat is on. He's warming up. Hmm. If there's a thing with these old tellies, we've got to give them a... buzzing. Sounds like high tension leakage. Leaking high voltage somewhere. Coming smell ozone. Hopefully it's not in the transformer. Yeah, we're leaking in there. Might just be dirt on the cathode ray tube leaking from under the cap. That's what it sounds like. Oh, well, it shows promise. Yeah, we're definitely leaking inside here. Leaking current. I don't see anything. You can certainly smell ozone coming from it. It's arcing externally. I'll have to take it open, take it apart and just check it out. Make sure there's no muck in there. It's dying down there. Just slowed down. Not happy though. Well yeah, EHT leakage has settled right down. It's still got great brightness. Just got to readjust the picture a bit and get a signal onto it. And that's high brightness. And that's minimum brightness, you can still see it. It's not bad. So she just needs a proper antenna signal and uh, recalibration. I'll obviously I'll clean it up in the back and make sure everything's right, particularly around the EHT and the anode cap. Make sure nothing leaks too bad. Or steel, steel cabinet. <laughs> I don't make them like this anymore. And the capacitors are made in Australia. You don't see that either. Yeah, a little bit of leakage from the high tension though. But 
which is a good old girl. Tubes are nicely warmed up. And that's the thing, they need warm up time. I'm just in the process of cleaning the whole thing up. It's come up pretty good. There's no obvious damage on the PCB. So I shouldn't say PCB, there's no printed circuit. The control board. Mice have been in here, but they haven't chewed anything too bad. Obviously it still works, it just needs recalibrating because all these uh, horizontal and vertical hold pots have been knocked around. Gotta take this cover off and clean in there. One thing I notice is this lead floats in and out of the uh, doubler or whatever that is. That might be our uh, source of arcing. So I'll look into that one. Uh, of course, uh, don't touch anything like this if it hasn't been discharged. I have actually discharged this one. Always have a discharge lead handy when you're working on equipment with CRTs. I lost my original discharge lead, but this one will do. If not, just use two screwdrivers. Make sure one's touching the lead coating on the outside of the tube and carefully slide the other one under the cap until you touch the anode. You'll notice there's charge in there, you get a nice bang. I'll do a proper video on CRT safety. I'll very carefully wipe the tubes and everything down. Some of them, I mean, this has been a smoker's television, so they're covered in nicotine staining and crap. So some of the markings have been eaten off by it. But there's a diagram on the back cover which tells you exactly what type of tube is what. So, if I have to replace one, I can refer to that if I can't read what's actually on the tube. But they're all there and they're all working. I've got to clean in here next and that'll be it. Get the transformer a bit of a clean up. And, uh, yeah, wipe out and get the shop back in and clean the case out. Well, this is the inside of the high voltage section. And that flyback transformer insulation is just gone. Not happy. A big tube in here. Right. A fine winding on here, plus the coarse primary winding, and the secondary going to here and through out to the HT lead. Also these two here, just a single loop around, probably the frequency control. Yeah, take that off. Which is a bit rough but it'll work again. Dirt. Is that dirt or is that supposed to be like a carbon paint coating? I wonder if that's actually supposed to be painted black or something. <laughs>